That was Dr. Neil Flock. That was really interesting. Uh, talking about type 2 diabetes, which we will be doing again. So in a moment, mm-hmm. we're here at Stribling's New York on WOR 710 on your digital dial and iHeart Media Company, sponsored by MC Home Loans. You can reach Melissa Cohn at 844-667-7300, which is amazing that you can actually reach a human being on the phone. We have another human being on the phone. Steve Cuso from the New York Post is somebody I read frequently, if not religiously. And he's all, we're also joined in the studio by our producer, Tony Simone. Say hi, Tony. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me on. Steve, I, I love the article you wrote this Sunday. Not so fast on banning tipping, please, even though I call for it. Uh, TIPS, which I mentioned before on the show, TIPS stands for To Ensure Proper Service. And now there's a big brouhaha in the restaurant business. Like, was it started by Danny Meyer about changing the tipping policy? Well, uh, first of all, I don't. Uh, the idea that TIPS stands is an acronym for to ensure proper service. I, I think that tale is apocryphal. I got that in the um, New York Post. <laughs> I only know what I read in the New York Post. I, <laughs> I read that in I the Post. I didn't write that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but, um, well, um, Danny Meyer really got the ball rolling um, last fall. There are, <clears throat> have always been a very small number of uh, restaurants in Manhattan, maybe one or two in Brooklyn, which had a no-tipping policy. Um, that doesn't mean customers wouldn't pay more for the privilege of not having to tip. But Danny is the first restaurateur of his level of, of power and accomplishment and, and, and wealth, and he's got a lot of restaurants. He has about eight or nine restaurants in, in, in Manhattan um, who could really bring about a, a kind of a sea change in, in the practice. And if Danny starts it and if it succeeds, others are going to have to follow. And I think that many other restaurants are going to follow uh, uh, his lead uh, and, and that of others down the line, <clears throat> not because they necessarily believe in the idea, as I do, that tipping is inherently um, demeaning to both to service staff and to customers, but they have a, because they have a sort of a more bottom line view, which uh, related to the uh, increase in uh, minimum wage going up to uh, uh, I forget the numbers, but it's going up significantly. It went up significantly in January, which means that all restaurants are going to have to pay back of the house staff. That is generally the kitchen staff, cooks and porters who really made peanuts, uh, something more resembling a, a living wage. And the idea behind getting rid of tips, when you get rid of tips, you can raise your prices. You'll have to raise your prices. And I think a lot of places are going to raise their prices a lot, and customers are going to be surprised. So even though I'm in favor of getting rid of tipping, I have a lot of qualms about the reason, the motivation behind uh, it's, it's suddenly becoming more popular now. Well, you brought up a good point in the article, which is that <clears throat> if the tip is included in the price, then the tax amount is going to go up on the check. It's going to make the check higher. What happens if you have two people with the same amount of food charges, but customer A buys two expensive bottles of wine, customer B buys two cheaper bottles of wine? Is the tip going to be added to the the cost of the wine too? Well, I mean, you mean in a system without tipping? Yes. The, I mean, the restaurants are going to, are planning to increase their prices by a certain percentage. Is so that on they, food and they, alcohol or just food? No, on the whole bill. So that means that it's going to go up on if you um, if you've ordered um, a, a thousand dollar bottle of wine, uh, which <laughs> is something that uh, even I haven't my, done that recently. Even my expense account w- won't won't allow. Um, the presumably, then the restaurant is going to, you know, that's part of the total price, uh, which the restaurant will raise by a certain percentage. However, that remains really to be seen. It doesn't mean that if you go into a restaurant, the all of a sudden, the, all the wines on the list are going to be jacked up by any particular percentage. There are so many. That's one of the points that I that I that I made, Rob, in this piece is that there are so many unanswered questions, and you know, Danny Meyer has really gotten the ball rolling at uh, two of his restaurants, the Modern and, and Maialino, which are both great restaurants. 
and there are others uh, per se has long been a no tipping place. Um, Tom Colicchio now has no tipping at lunchtime at Kraft. Um, now, Levitt Steve, Manager this is Park. This- but we don't know where this is going to lead, it's, and, and we're not going to have answers within a month or six months. It's going to take perhaps years to see how this works out for customers and for employees. Now, Tony Steve, has a question Now, Steve, you. I imagine this is hugely beneficial for a waiter. I know when I was a waiter, there were many tourists who would come to New York. I worked in Miami restaurants as well, and literally some would leave without tipping, and some would put the most minimal tip ever. That said, I lived in Southeast Asia and Europe where you don't tip. And honestly, at least the places we went to eat and some of them were high-end restaurants, the service was horrible. Will it it affect service if they know that they're getting a salary no matter what? That's one of the great unanswerables. And I have uh, friends in the restaurant business, and I'm afraid I can't use names, but who are uh, adamantly opposed to getting rid of the tipping practice. And these, this includes some very, very high-end restaurants because they travel extensively. And in those parts of Europe, including London and Paris, where most restaurants have service included, um, they complain that the service is, is, is dreadful. That's not an experience that I've had. When I, when I travel to those cities, I enjoy the fact that it, it seems to me that the service is actually more professional um, because waiters aren't craven. They aren't oh. beholden to customers' whims. But it's, uh, it, you know, everyone will have a different, uh, a different view of it. I think that some waiters are going to be very happy and some will be very unhappy with it. The way that, the, the way that a lot of uh, visitors to New York, especially Europeans, p- pretend not to know that you're, ob- you're obliged to tip here is a disgrace. And, of course, this will eliminate that. Um, but it creates other issues. You were a waiter, and you know very well that in, in, in a New York, in, in good restaurants, a waiter who is good at it and gets the right shifts can make more than a starting lawyer in a year. Yeah. Well, that's and very that true. Here with a no tipping system. It, it, look, I'm glad that you wrote the article because we have had a number of restaurateurs on the show, and I know many of them as personal friends. And the one taboo area for them is they don't want to come on here and discuss tipping. <laughs> the, the, the actual the owners of the restaurants. Yeah, well, it is a hot potato, and I mean there are a million there are a million ways that someone can open his or her mouth and create problems. You can create problems with your employees, with your customers, with the state labor department, with the state finance department, uh, with the media, um, because things can easily be misconstrued. Here's a quick question: We've got about a minute and a half left. Tipping and restaurants used to be primarily a cash business, and it's not as much anymore. Since everything's on a credit card, there's a record of everything. It's not like somebody can pocket hidden cash anyway. Is that going to be a factor that may lean towards having it included? Um, Possibly, but although it is true, of course, that there are very few restaurants where people pay cash. um, I know a few, but very few. Somehow, even though what you're saying is, of course, true about credit cards, credit card payments, on a certain level, it's still a cash business. And that's why uh, Joe Bastianich, Mario uh, Batali's uh, partner, wrote a book a few years ago in which he said, one of the things about the restaurant business is that everybody steals. Your customers steal, your staff steals, your partners steal. And I steal a lot of bread wherever I go. <laughs> <laughs> it's going I'm, ahead into of my on, I'm ahead of you on that one, way ahead of you. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Fred Steve. doesn't come right away. I demand it. Steve, it was really great that you could join us. I hope you'll come back again soon. We got a lot to talk about. You also write about real estate. I read your column regularly. I read you, Kyle Smith, Phil, Phil Mushnick, Jennifer Kyle. You're all friends, all and I appreciate your work. New York Post, we are all superstars. It's true. Uh, my dad used to be a headline writer back in the day when Dolly Schiff owned it. Thanks so much for joining us. You've been listening to Stribblings, New York. I'm Rob Taub. My producer is Tony Simone. Our engineer is Robert Barrett's. He invented the soundboard and standing in line. <laughs>